We just do what God wants us to do. Because if I would have tried to do it any other way, any other way, don't get me wrong, I don't do it at all that way. But if I was to do it any other way for any any reason, you know what would happen? It would never worked out. It would have never, ever, ever worked out in any way, shape, or form. Why? Because I'm doing it my way. I'm not like Frank Sinatra or Elvis who said, I did it my way. I did it God's way. And I find out by doing it God's way, it works absolutely to a T without fail. So doing it God's way is the best way. You can't do it your way because your way will always, always fail. Let me give you an example of that. Okay. I got some kits here that allow me to build a radio. Okay. I know right now they're called snap circuits. I used to have the original Tandy Company 160 and 1. If any of you remember the Tandy Company 150, 175, 160, or there actually was a 50. There was a 100. There was a 50. There was a 10. There was a 50. There was a 75 and 1. Then there was a 101, then there was 160 in one. If you all remember that from Dandy Company, leave a comment in the comment section and let me know that you remember it. But mine now is the Snap Circuits version, which is not as fun as the other one, but it's easier, but it's still fun and I still like to use it. But with the 160 in one that I used to have, You had all these different spring terminals on a big board with all these different computer components like resistors and transistors and all these other little components, right? So what you do is you dive into it, you take your wires and you start bending springs back and you put them places. But here's the thing. You don't just do that. You got to look at the instructions because if you don't, That big massive board of all these circuitry components ain't going to do you nothing. You're going to take one look at that and say, I want to throw this away. Or even look and say, I want to throw this at the wall. Because you got to look at the instructions. So if you just try doing it your way, you might get a little something like, I can do it my way a little bit. I can make a light bulb turn on. Okay? But being that I can make a light bulb turn on, That's good and everything, but you need to do more than just a light bulb turning on. So with that being said, what I'm trying to get at is this. When you do it your way, the light bulb might just turn on. But when you do it God's way, the radio will turn on. You get what I'm saying? When you do it your way, it doesn't work out. But you got to read the instructions. You got to do what God wants you to do. And the instructions is the word. That's why I get into the Word with you each and every Monday. We need to be in the Word. Because without that Word, that basic instruction before leaving earth, when if you're not in that Word, the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to fail miserably. Why? Because you're not in the Word. As Bishop and Dr. Cheryl once said, I said it once on the show too, and even in the Bible, I think it was David who spoke it. He says, he says, I meditate on his Word day and night. He's basically said, I keep my nose in that word. Every moment I have a chance to, I keep my nose in that word. So we need to keep our noses in that word. So with that being said, let's get into our message just first. Let's get into our message. But first, let me uh, message my wife. Hold on. I'm trying to spell a word and it's it's there we go. <clears throat> My wife is using her phone at the moment and there's somebody on her phone doing some kind of conversation piece, but but it can be heard. I don't want nothing to be too heard on the show because it, there's a copyright infringement crap and if I start getting any piece of anything that's on the show that's not, you know, 
supposed to be on the show without permission or whatnot, then I can get myself in trouble with that. So let's list, let's give a message out to all my listeners. There we go, and we are going to hit send. There we go. So let's get into our message for today. <clears throat> Sorry about that again. Our message is simply entitled, Will You Pass? And on the top of my title, I got two ovals. One says yes, and one says no, and there's a check mark in the yes. We'll get with that in just a minute. So, Right now, we are going through one of the biggest tests of our faith, COVID-19. Every, everyone that is a Christian should know that God is using this to test us to see how faithful we will be to God and to Christ. You know, when all this is going on, because think about it. <clears throat> there are many people who are losing their lives at this moment, Okay. And losing your life, if you're not a Christian, or if you are, for some people, is one of the scariest things in the world. Dying to some people, don't get me wrong, I'm not afraid of dying. I know that for a fact that when I die, I will be going to heaven and be with my Maker, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I'll be praising Him for eternity. Now, don't get me wrong, I am not perfect. I am far from it. And anybody, you can you can ask anybody. The, the three main people you can ask is Bishop, Dr. Cheryl, and Dr. Tom Ray. My three greatest friends from church. You can ask them. I am far from it. Just ask them what they had to go through with me before I became fully saved. Don't get me wrong. I was saved back then, and Bishop knew it. And Bishop knew stuff was going to be going on in my lifetime. But I'm like what one of the Nightingales used to say, the sensational Nightingales used to say. He goes, I was saying, Lord, Lord, from my lips, but my heart was far from God. Don't get me wrong. I believed in God. I loved God with all my heart. But I was still doing things in my lifetime that was not kosher with God. And so I am far from perfect. Don't get me wrong. I'm not doing things like that now. I mean, I can't say that I ain't or I'm not because there are some stuff in our subconscious that we every day when we pray, and we ask for our forgiveness that we need to say, Lord, you take the subconscious stuff out that I don't even know about that is in my mind that only you know that is against you and sinful against you. So we all we ought to pray that every waking moment when we pray for ourselves and we ask for our forgiveness. We need to pray for the subconscious as well. But with that being said, I'm not perfect. There are going to be times when I am going to slip and I'm going to fall. There are going to be times when I've got mad at somebody or I'm going to get mad at somebody. Just in a general sense where I'm going to do something that I know is going to be not of God and God is not going to be happy with this guy right here. But that's okay. Why? Because when we get back off, when we fall off the horse, we just, as the old song goes, get back up, dust yourself off and try again. Get back up, dust yourself off and try again, try again. Like they say, if you first, if at first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again, try again, try again. I'm not trying to sing it, but you get the point. So I'm going to dust myself off and get back on the horse. I'm going to dust myself off and try again. I'm going to do what I need to do for God with the best of my ability. <clears throat> but we are going. To, but there are people out there. Who are so scared of dying and I'm not. I mean I know where exactly I'm going to go when I get to heaven. God's going to take one look at me and says. Okay I know you did this, 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 this and this. I know you did all these horrible rotten things. I see everything that you did. I seen each man that you were with. Man that you were with when you were in the, that lifestyle. I see when you were you know, addicted to the internet and the pornography business. I see when you're doing that. I saw everything that you've done. It's all in the book. It's all in the book that you said you did that. That says you did that. But guess what? My son died for that, 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 that. By the time he gets done 
naming what his son died for? He looks back at the book and he says, well, that's taken care of. You're no longer in that book. Let me try to open the, the other book. And Lambskins, he opens it up and there's my name. So I know I'm going to make it to heaven because Jesus died for not just me, but for everyone in the world. <clears throat> he died for those who choose him. Now, he did, the Bible does say that he died for many. He didn't die for all, but he died for many, those who choose him. But here's the thing. Here's what I think. Jesus actually died for everyone in the world, but they choose not to accept it. So that's why the Bible says that I died for many, not all. Because not everyone's going to physically choose Jesus as Lord and Savior, and that's okay. That's just, it's just what they do. I mean, I can't force it down their throat, like someone at my work recently said. They don't like when Christians force their beliefs down their throat. I don't force anything down anybody's throat. I can't. I'm not going to sit there and say, well, God, I forced it down her throat. Now she said she believes in you. But in her hearts of heart, she don't. You get what I'm saying? So I'm not going to force anything down someone's throat and make it to where they're just like, you know, no, I don't want this. I want to bring as much love from Christ as I can by simply doing things like, hey, how are you doing today? Can I pray for you? How was your how's your mom doing? I heard that she was uh, not feeling good or she was sick or had this or that. Or uh, how was your like one of the guys at my at my last job over at the. Uh, oh, hello, Gary. Shout out to Gary at the Laundry Palace. Anyways, one of my customers, Frank, would come to her all the time every Monday at like six, seven o'clock. He'd be there doing his laundry and he had uh, cancer. He had skin cancer and I. And I would come over there and, hey, Frank, how are you doing today? How's your skin cancer doing? How's your radiation treatments going? Are they any better? Is this any worse or whatnot? And he'd tell me, he goes, Andrew, it's doing, all, it's doing better. And, you know, he'd give me good good stuff. And so it's, I try to give the love of God as much as I can instead of shoving God down someone's throat. No one wants, want, no one wants anything shoved down their throat. Example being, say you don't like peas. But I shove a spoonful of them down your throat. You're going to be PO'd at me one. But I don't do that. I don't shove Jesus down someone's throat. Jesus is not something that you shove down someone's throat. So with that being said, I give as much love as I can. And I make it so that they, that way they feel, you know, loved by not just me, but by God. And then when they go through something or they need, you know, some counsel or whatnots. They remember that I was loving towards them or you or whoever was loving towards them and not shoving God down their throat. And then they'll more, they'll more often come back to you and start talking with you. And that's when you can start getting into showing more love to to them from God. Like one of the guys in my last workplaces here in Ohio, Wendy's, uh, one of the manager guys, you know, he was gay and stuff. And I said, look, I got nothing against you. I used to be that way. And I almost got to the point to telling him about things that happened in my childhood with my father. But the actual boss decided she was ready to leave. And so he had to leave. But I got to the point to where I actually was starting to make him think about things. And getting him, you know, engaged into a conversation that really was just, was just God inspired entirely. So... I showed love to him. It may not have done anything right then and there, but I showed love. And that's what we need to do. We don't need to shove God down someone's throat, you know. God's not, you know, something you just, you need to take him now or else. You don't do that to people. But right now we are going through one of the biggest tests of our faith, COVID-19, that will, that that will show our true colors with God. So what I'm saying with that is this disease that's going around COVID-19, it's going to show some of our true colors out there. God is really going to see who is for him and who is against him. <clears throat> that will show our true colors with God. Who we really are. Let's look at a few scriptures. Now, with that being said, the introduction to my message was kind of a little bit, it's going to be a little off, but it's okay. But our first scripture is Genesis 22, 
1 through 13.